What's up guys and welcome to another installment of AA Computers and Technology and I'm 80% sure that this video is going to end up falling under the failure series of videos but we will see. So I ordered some parts off eBay. I ordered 10 1000 microfarad capacitors um, and then after I did that I realized that this probably wasn't going to be enough capacitance to do what I wanted to do but I'm going to try to do it anyway because the parts came in and you know because I can. So we're going to have some fun with this today. Uh, if you recall I think two weeks ago, uh, I tried to get this uh, Mediasonic Pro Box drive enclosure to run off solely USB uh, because it was using a really bulky power adapter, a 12 volt power adapter, and I had to plug it into the wall and it just really wasn't convenient uh, for you know moving it around and trying to use it for uh, the experiment series of videos. Uh, so I went ahead and just dedicated this as the server backup. But I want to see if I can get this to run off USB again today with a little bit more capacitance. Now the problem with this is that it draws a lot of power on startup as the hard drive is using a electric motor and that motor consumes quite a bit of current when it is initially spinning up. Uh, I think this thing consumes about 24 watts of power for a couple seconds on startup uh, and USB 3.0 just can't provide that. So what we're going to be doing today is seeing if we can put these capacitors in parallel um, and get this drive to spin up and actually work through solely USB. And if you want a little bit more background on this, you can go ahead and check out the last video that I made. The link will be in the description because I'm not going to give too much background right now. I want to try to keep this video short because it might, well, it probably will end up being a failure and I don't want to waste your guys' uh, uh, time if it does end up being a failure. So let's go ahead and get started. And of course, uh, don't forget to drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it. If you didn't like something, please leave a reason why. So let's get down to business now. Okay, so I decided to give a really, really, really quick background on what exactly I'm doing here. So if someone decides not to go back and watch the last video for some reason, which once again, I do suggest you do, uh, you are not completely lost. So what exactly I'm trying to do today is get this 3.5 inch drive enclosure running solely off USB. I have my two USB cables right here. So this is going to take up at least three USB ports. So we're going to have two for the power and then one for actual data transfer. And we're going to step up the voltage using these five volt two. 12 volt step up modules and I have two of them uh, wired up in parallel along with these uh, USB uh, cables and then right here is going to be the output to our capacitor bank so that's going to be wired into the breadboard uh, and basically the output to the drive is going to go from the capacitor bank which will be on the breadboard uh, to the driving closer using this little cable I cut off from uh, this car adapter which I no longer use uh, and then of course we're going to have all the wiring and everything up on top of that so I'm going to go ahead and start throwing this all together it's going to be an absolute mess but hey it might actually work so let's go ahead and see So I have yet to power on the 3.5 inch driving closure. I want to capture that moment on camera. So something explodes over here, which it shouldn't because I've double checked everything and everything seems to be wired in right. But just in case something explodes, I want to have the camera handy so we could get that footage because that would be really cool to capture it on camera. So you can see everything is wired up over here. We'll start from the bottom and work our way up. You can see the two 5 volt to 12 volt step up modules right here, ready to go. LED indicators are on. I am kind of concerned about these because uh, just off the bat, and I didn't realize this last time, but just off the bat, uh, checking with my meter, they're outputting under 12 volts. So uh, not really sure about these uh, little step up modules. They were really cheap, 99 cents off eBay. If I ever try this again, uh, if this doesn't work, which I hope it does, but once again, uh, I did the quick calculations uh, in my head and I don't think that's enough capacitance. We would need something uh, around 30,000 to uh, 50,000 milliamps worth of capacitance to get this thing started. Uh, and of course, I think the voltage would have to be a bit higher than that. Uh, yeah, these, I didn't realize how uh, poor these were, unfortunately, just until now. So that's kind of an eye opener. I probably should have checked that from the beginning. Uh, but yeah, if this doesn't work, I might have to order some different step up converters off eBay or Amazon or something like that. Or maybe I'll just make some modifications to these to get them up to above 12 volts, somewhere around 12.5 would be much more comfortable for something like this. And I think in the last clip, I said 30,000 to 50,000 milliamps. I meant to say microfarads. Hopefully I remembered to throw that annotation in there, uh, but you guys know what I meant. There's a blocking diode right there. You can see all the capacitors right here. All of them are wired up in the correct polarity. So hopefully nothing explodes and nothing should explode. And I think I've gone over everything. Let's go ahead and power this thing on. 
And I'm going to go ahead and turn on my meter just to see how the voltage drops when we uh, turn this thing on. So we're sitting really close to 12 volts, but still under it. So uh, yeah, these uh, might be a little bit too low for what we need. Uh, but let's go ahead and try to get this thing up and running. So powering on in three, two, you know what, maybe I should back up a little bit so we could get the whole picture if something blows up. One. Ah, we got the same thing we did last time. You can hear the, uh, the, the hard drive clicking. I'm not sure if that's coming out on camera. Hopefully the mic's picking that up. And you can see that uh, LED indicator light is on, but just not enough power to spin up that platter inside the hard drive. And you can see the voltage has dipped down to 11.2 uh, volts. So uh, too low right there to get this thing up and running, unfortunately. Yeah, didn't work. Um, so yeah, we need more capacitance and probably have to scrap these or make some modifications to these to get the voltage up just a tad. Okay, so there's three things I took away from this video. The first one is that we need some higher quality step up modules, or as I said like three times in this video already, I need to make some modifications to them to get them to output 12.5 to 13 volts. So they charge the capacitor bank up to that voltage. Uh, while we're on the subject of capacitors, that brings me to number two. We obviously need some more capacitance. I think some of you commented in the comments section last time that I would need like 30,000 to uh, uh, 40,000 microfarads worth of capacitance, and I think that is about right. Now, with that in mind, it kind of becomes impractical because at that point, uh, you just get this massive capacitor bank and it's like 10 times the size of the original wall wart. Um, so I'm not really sure if I want to go on with this little project. I would really like to get the 3.5 inch enclosure running solely off USB, but I'm not really sure if that's possible. And if you guys know of any examples online uh, where people actually built something to make that plausible, uh, please post the link to that in the comment section because I would really like to check that out. And that was point number three if you guys couldn't figure that out. I forgot to mention that before I started uh, blabbering on about it. So if you have any suggestions for this, please leave your feedback in the comment section because this is what the video is all about. I want to get some advice from you guys uh, because I would really like to get this up and running, but unfortunately at this point it kind of seems impractical with all the capacitance uh, and capacitors that we would have to have and everything else. So not really sure. Once again, if I'm going to continue on with this, I'll decide in a little bit. Uh, got a cool video coming out tomorrow. We're going to take a look at Phoenix OS because we We've already taken a look at Remix OS, uh, and then maybe in the future we'll do a all-out comparison between the two. Uh, still doing some research on it, so I'm not ready to, uh, you know, talk about it yet, uh, but I will be tomorrow. So really excited for that episode of Software Sunday. Uh, go ahead and check it out uh, when it comes out tomorrow on Sunday. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you liked the video. If you didn't like the video, please leave a reason why. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to support the channel you can use our Amazon affiliate links in the description to buy whatever you want uh, it doesn't cost you anything and we get a small commission off your purchase so thanks for watching guys and I will see you in tomorrow's episode of software Sunday